Hi everybody, this is a video about long COVID. Um, someone asked a question about this on one of my other videos, uh, basically just asking, well, let, let me just read it here. Um, basically, what, oh, okay. what is long COVID and why are so many folks varying in severity is the, is the question. So thank you for the question. Um, as per usual, nothing that I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So in terms of what is long COVID, um, this is all you know my understanding of it. Uh, from what I've seen pieced together from the literature and what I've seen based on my clinical experience. I've had quite a number of patients now who have these persisting symptoms following COVID-19 and um, they seem to fit the bill for this long COVID. So um, my understanding is that the SARS-CoV-2 virus, i.e. the causal agent behind um, COVID-19, is um, very capable of activating something in the body called the inflammasome. Now, of course, you know, thankfully, many folks don't get major symptoms from COVID-19. Some folks were asymptomatic. Some people had certainly, you know, tougher bouts of it. And then, of course, some people had, you know, severe reactions and died and just awful. Um, but uh, ultimately, COVID, uh, the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus is able to activate the inflammasome, which is essentially this cascade of pro-inflammatory signaling molecules called cytokines that go throughout the body and ultimately create a bunch of inflammation and that can you know impact impact our airways and um, hearts and you know all the various areas that can sometimes be, or that were more susceptible to um, the SARS-CoV-2 virus um, in some folks not in everybody of course thankfully but in some folks um, so that activation of the inflammasome um, to my understanding it underlies why we can see these issues with long COVID um, and that can be for a couple of reasons it could you know just be from the SARS-CoV-2 virus itself potentially, but in my experience, and uh, this is an experience that to my understanding is shared by a large number of my colleagues who you know, have focuses in complex chronic illness or, or see these types of things in practice, a lot of times when we see a virus kind of going like off the rails, it kind of going haywire, it's usually because there are other underlying factors that are enabling that virus to go haywire. Oftentimes it's um, underlying mold toxicity, could be related to heavy metal accumulation, could be other toxins or toxicants that a person has built up in their system. Could be other pre-existing infections, like with the Lyme disease causing bacteria or co-infections. Could be um, other viruses that were already there and maybe had set the stage on top of the other underlying factors that you know, um, allowed them to be more active in the first place. So it might be that there was already kind of a smoldering virus party going and then the SARS-CoV-2 virus came in and just you know really turned it into a big rager that was just you know, really, really not good, a very, very harmful party. Um, and so, um, it, the take home message from my experience at least is that there's likely uh, uh, in, in cases that I've seen at least in practice um, there's generally been other underlying factors that we've been able to point our finger at that probably allowed for that um, inflammasome activation to just really go off the rails. Um, unfortunately, when the inflammasome gets activated, then, uh, and especially if there are, you know, significant other um, comorbidities afoot or like other causal agents afoot, then the immune system can kind of get stuck in this pro-inflammatory mode. It's sort of like the switch gets flicked and then, you know, nobody can seem to find the switch to flick it back off again. Um, and, and eventually the body will, in many cases, you know, taper things off and person will get better, but it can take, you know, weeks and weeks or months and months and maybe longer potentially. COVID hasn't been around for that long to be able to say years and years, um, but it's obviously been around for a few years now. But um, yeah, hard to say how you know chronic it could potentially become. So cases um, for a lot of folks seem to be able to burn themselves out, but um, some folks that does not seem to burn itself out, or at least they've been sick you know, just as sick for months and months and they're like, okay, it's time for me to see somebody and they'll talk to someone like me or someone else who can hopefully help them. So that is the scoop with the, um, you know, in my, to, my, um, in my, to my understanding, that is the scoop of what is long COVID. Um, and then the other question about why so many, uh, why are so many folks having a varying uh, severity of long COVID? And I believe that has to do with um, just what were those underlying uh, factors that allowed them their body to be more susceptible to the long COVID in the first place. Um, I think I have another video somewhere, oh yeah, somewhere, somewhere on social media um, that talks about uh, some of the therapeutic interventions that I found to be useful for my patients dealing with long COVID. Um, you can try to search that if you want a more thorough video around that. Uh, I'm just searching by keyword in my name. Um, however, if uh, just as a quick uh, recap, because folks listening might be like, oh, I want to, you know, I want to know about what uh, things might be useful in terms of. Interventions, not just about you know what is this guy's uh, uh, 
opinion on what long COVID is. Um, so the things that I found to be the most useful in practice for my patients dealing with long COVID um, include N-acetylcysteine, uh, quercetin, um, the herb Chinese skullcap. Um, some folks I find actually need to go on more broad spectrum antimicrobials to help um, clear up the long COVID. Um, um, intravenous ozone therapy can be really helpful, although of course that's not accessible to everyone. Um, and, uh, and sometimes using um, enzymes away from meals, so like natokinase, stratiopeptidase, um, if folks can afford it, lumbrokinase, which is just really great enzyme, just very, very expensive, those can be useful. But then it also, again, as I was saying earlier, really depends on what were those underlying factors that allowed someone to get sick in the first place. So in some cases, you know, patients come in and they're like, yeah, I'm already on all that stuff and I'm not really feeling much better. Um, and it, we have to and then it turns out they have a history of mold exposure or they're working in a moldy environment or something. So we're bringing in the binders and the glutathione and the various things to help actually get the mold um, out of their toxins out of their system. And that's what's necessary to get them on track. Um, I almost forgot one of my most important uh, to uh, important uh, subjects and, and interventions is I've also found that a lot of folks with long COVID um, seem to benefit a lot from uh, comprehensive mitochondrial support. So a, high potency multinutrient plus this other formula called mitochondrial support formula um, that has high levels of um, all of the most important cofactors and substrates needed for proper mitochondrial function. I've definitely talked about that in other videos, so please reference that. Or if you want um, more explicit details around that, not dosing recommendations, because I'm not allowed to give those out to non-patients, but if you want more explicit details around um, mitochondrial support and what I feel is a comprehensive support uh, protocol for the mitochondria, um, please sign up for my mailing list. It should be available in the video description below or in my bio if you're watching this on Instagram. And if you sign up for my mailing list, you get access to the first uh, two parts of my Overcoming Chronic Illness course. Um, and the uh, second part of that course is all about mitochondrial dysfunction. I get into that in a lot of detail. So thank you for the question. If anybody has any further questions about this topic or anything else, just post in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as I can.